A critique city, a historical city steeped in lore and myth, a city that even now bears the mark of its history. A critique city is known to be the origin place of several important events and notable characters within the Johto region. The story of the two towers, ho -Oh, Lugia and the legendary beasts, the mysterious and beautiful Kimono girls, as well as the ghostly gym leader Morty. Equitik's Japanese name, Enju City, also hints at the 8-bit city's historical nature, with En meaning fate, bond, connection between people, and Ju meaning longevity. Equitik is truly one of the most fascinating locations in the wonderful Johto region. So join me as we tour through Johto and the real-life locations that served as inspiration for the Gold and Silver region. Of course, our first stop will be the historical Ecritic City and its real-life counterpart, Kyoto, Japan. Ecritic City is heavily inspired by Japan's Kyoto, known as the Old Capital. The buildings and atmosphere of Ecritic City remind me of Kyoto's Gion District. The Gion District is the most popular geisha district in Japan. But beyond just geisha, it's one of the places in Japan where you will still see many people still wearing traditional wear such as kimono or hakama, regardless of the time of year. The streets are always crowded with people, young and old, locals and visitors, all basking in the historical atmosphere. As a central point of Kyoto, Ecritic likely draws a lot of inspiration from Gion. Gion is also the home of many traditional tea houses, theaters which act as a stage for many geisha performances along with bunraku performances. Gion is also the home of many rental kimono stores and oiran photo studios. Oiran, also known as court sons, are often associated with geisha, although their roles and duties are vastly different. These oiran photo studios allow customers to dress up in brightly colored expensive kimonos have their hair and makeup done and take photos in Japanese S studios. In the past, I even spent a brief stint working in such a studio in Kyoto. If you are interested in kimono or geisha history, Kyoto also has much more to offer, including museums such as Orisekan, where you can learn how kimono and kimono accessories were made, both in the past and in the present day. I visited this museum and it's truly an amazing educational experience. A very kind lady explained to me how every detail of every kimono made, especially for kimonos worn by no actors, geishas and maikos, are so time demanding, intricate and inspired. I can imagine that the equity kimono girls are also the rarest of kimonos that carry such importance, effort and time. About a 13 minute bus ride from the nostalgic streets of Gion, you will find Kyoto's Pokemon Center, an almost always busy shop, full of Pokemon toys, merchandise and cards. Of course, excluding the Pokemon Center you visit to heal your wounded and tired Pokemon in Equitic City, there is no shop like this in the game, although I suppose an argument could be made for the Pokemart. For my trip to Kyoto, I visited shortly after the release of the Scarlet and Violet Teal Mask DLC release. So there was a lot of promotion for the DLC on display. Kyoto boasts many renowned beautiful temples, shrines and pavilions. Three well-known shrines and temples are Fushimi Inari Taisha, Kiyo Mizudera and Yasaka Shrine, with a beautiful walkway, fun kimono shops and food stalls. However, there are three other shrines that relate and are the likely inspirations for Equitik's famous bell and burn towers. First, let's have a look at the bell tower. The home of ho -Oh likely draws a majority of its inspiration from Ginkakuji. Ginkakuji, also known as the Silver Pavilion. Perhaps it's a little confusing as it's the home of ho -Oh. Ginkakuji originally gained the name Gin meaning silver, for having a silverish appearance due to the original lacquer's reflection on the water of the surrounding ponds. Although it was discussed during the restoration period, it was actually never covered in silver leaf. Atop the roof of the pavilion sits a statue of a silver phoenix. The path leading up to King Kakuji also seems to be the inspiration behind another important Ecritic location, Belltime Trail bears a striking resemblance to Tetsugaku no Michi, known as the Philosopher's Walk in English. 
To reach Ginkakuji, much like how one needs to walk through Belchime Trail in the games, one must walk through the Philosopher's Walk. The Philosopher's Walk is littered with many autumn leaves, as long as you can get the timing right. Unfortunately, I went near the end of the season, so a lot of the leaves had already fallen and been blown away. But along the path, there are many small little shops selling souvenirs and kimono goods, as well as several cafes where you can grab a delicious bite to eat while admiring the beautiful scenery. An additional possible inspiration for the Bell Tower is Toji Temple, also known as the East Temple. Toji Temple bears a striking visual resemblance to the Bell Tower with the primary pagoda standing at five stories tall. The main pagoda is neighbored by other smaller buildings and a beautiful park. Being known as the East Temple, Toji Temple is of course located on the east side just as the Bell Tower is located on the east side of Ekritik. And much like the Bell Tower, Toji Temple also has a sister temple. Or oh, well, it used to have a sister temple. Moving on to the Burned Tower, the tower in which the original lives of the three legendary beasts were taken in a fire. The charred structure of this once beautiful tower still holds great importance to the people of Ekritik City. The burnt tower draws inspiration from Kinkakuji, also known as the Golden Pavilion. Kinkakuji is one of the most well-known temples in all of Japan, drawing in many visitors every single day. Kinkakuji gets its name from the stunning golden color, with kin meaning gold. And the actual temple is not the only thing golden in this area, as you can also enjoy some gold leaf ice cream from nearby ice cream stands. However, much like Ekritik's burnt tower, Kinkakuji also has an unfortunate history with fire. The most notable fire occurring in July of 1950, in which the pavilion was burnt down by a monk. However, unlike Ekritik's burnt tower, Kinkakuji was rebuilt to its former glory, gold leaf and all. And atop the roof of the pavilion sits the statue of a beautiful golden phoenix, representing rebirth, much like ho -Oh. Also, like the bell tower, there is another, or at least there was another, temple that may have provided some inspiration for the burnt tower. Saiji Temple, a former sister temple of Toji Temple known as the Rest Temple, as it was located on the rest side of Kyoto, much like how the Burn Tower is located on the rest side of Ekritik City. However, unlike King Kakuji, Saiji Temple was burnt in fires and never rebuilt. Now, its former location is a small park. And finally, let's consider how Ekritik's Ghost Specialist Jim and the leader Morty may connect to the real world of Kyoto. Most cities with a history as long as Kyoto naturally have a fair share of old ghost stories. Kyoto itself has a strong lore and connection with many Japanese yokai. Yokai being Japanese spirits, demons and monsters. There are many festivals and events held in Kyoto, celebrating the importance of yokai culture, and even a shopping street. I think the choice to make Morty, the gym leader of Ekritik City, a ghost-type specialist is a nod towards Kyoto's long history and the cultural importance of yokai within the ancient city. Thank you for joining me on this brief journey through Ekritik and Kyoto City. With such historic important locations, it's impossible to cover every single detail. But I hope you have enjoyed this trip with me and maybe learned something along the way. I hope you will join me on the next stop of our real-life Johto adventure. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button, subscribe and drop a comment. Until next time, it's time to say bye bye. Matane.